Hmm, what's this? Hello, welcome to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I finally get to start up the coverage of Clockwork Empires. I've been waiting to do this for an exceptionally long period of time. I've actually had the game for a very long period of time. This was actually not provided to me by the developer, sadly enough, but our very own Party Commissar. So thank you, Commissar, for getting this for me. I told you as soon as the game was getting close to release, I would focus my attention and definitely hop in and play this. It is here now, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to embark on our first attempt, our first playthrough, our first go at Clockwork Empires. It's by Gaslamp Games, the folks that brought you Dungeons of Dreadmore, and it releases October 26th, 2016. So basically today, it's going to be the same time the video drops that the game should be coming out within a little while at least. And you'll notice that I'm playing this the night before. It is still beta 5.5a. It's not the full release yet. I don't know if the game's going to have to reset once it fully releases or what. And if I have to restart over at that point, that's totally fine. But I figured... I would have a video out there, so if you guys were like, what is this game? Hey, Bumpy just covered it. That's right. Let me go check it out. And then you guys go look and be like, oh, yeah, this is amazing. I want to play it. So, yeah, I've been pretty stoked and eager and excited to play this. Like I said, I've had it for a long time. Commissar was good enough to get it for me. And I've been waiting and waiting. And it's finally coming out. I finally get to play. So, with that, I'm going to hop in and get started here. Let's create a new game. And I guess we're creating a new world. It might take some time. So, what is Clockwork Empires? Well, apparently... From what I'm to understand, this is like a colony simulation slash strategy game, if you will. And essentially, you are a colonial, or let's see, you are, yeah, I think you're a colonial bureaucrat or something along those lines. And the Clockwork Empire has sent you to colonize a frontier colony. So I don't know if it's like a new planet or what exactly it is, but essentially, you're going out onto a frontier and you're supposed to make a colony. And you're going to have all these weird individuals with different quirks and different personalities. And you're going to try to get them to all live together, all work together. They're going to have specific jobs and various things of that nature. There's going to be hostile things coming to murder you. There's going to be all sorts of just terrible stuff happening. And you're supposed to try to mold everyone into a cohesive unit. And if you fail to do that and you upset anyone, they could do stuff as bad as starting up occult rituals and practices to actually eating fellow colonists. So, yeah, you want to try to avoid the cannibalism side of things, I think. Anyhow, here we are. I've had second thoughts. What does that mean? I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Disabled. Unlocked by reaching 100 population. 30 population. 100, 30, 30. It seems to be the, the main play here. I... I guess these are all, like, various different areas. Do, do, oh, it tells us stuff. Okay. The Wild Naturalists. Dominant Foreign Presence. Republic. Me Mechanicu? Mechanicae? Mechanic? Mechanicic? Mechanicic. I got nothing. Alright, what else we got? Um, Standard Expedition. Loadout. This is uh, our best and brightest. Uh, standard expedition again. Okay. Huh, it's interesting. Alright, so I want to see what all is here, guys. I'm sorry, nature's bounty. Okay. What do we have up here? Standard Lord Palmer Strokes expedition. Weird. Get out of the way. Uh, standard expedition, the wild naturalists, our best and brightest, uh, standard. Alright, what does standard do for us? The standard set of supplies for a new colony, a well-rounded stock for settling the frontier, seven overseers plus two laborers, uh, building materials, six days food, a few lumps of clay and sand, and two crates of spare ammunition. Then on this side, our best and brightest. A scouting group hastily converted into a colonist party. These colonists are highly skilled but lack basic supplies. Seven skilled overseers plus two laborers. Few basic building materials and two days worth of food. And then the wild naturalists. Inspired by brave adventurers. Uh, these colonists have brought supplies to set up a naturalist's office and mine. They lack food having relied on foraging on the way to the site. Seven overseers, two laborers, naturalist office construction materials, a few mine construction materials, no food. Huh. Uh, 
Uh, standard, we already know. What else do we have? Lord Palmer Strokes Expedition. Sent this group out personally to seek the mysteries of the frontier. They are lacking more practical supplies, however. Six overseers plus one scientifically inclined overseer. Eh? Eh? Plus two laborers. Materials to build and run a scientific laboratory. No food or other supplies. Ugh. The tutorial is enabled on all of these, so that's good, because I have no idea what I'm doing yet. Uh, there was like one more, wasn't there? Sorry guys, I'm going to click through all this real quick. I want to see if there was one more. Maybe there wasn't. I guess we could just start... Oh, Nature's Bounty. That was the other one. This foolhardy group of farmers brought nothing to the frontier but a massive supply of food. That's kind of funny. A full week's supply of food. No building materials. That seems stupid, right? Because, like, the standard is still... Sorry. The standard is still the... A full week's worth of... Oh, six days' worth of food. Okay. Alright, I think we're going to head up to the northern reaches, I think is where I want to start. Let's start, like, maybe right in this area, maybe. Hold on. Or maybe, like, right over here? Yeah, that looks like that's a possible. Uh, Stallmark is the uh, a dominant foreign presence. You get deserts, high prairie temperature, or temperate, moist mixed forest, tropical forest, tropical wetlands, alpine swamp, fresh water. Lake. What do we have down here? Uh, moist mixed forest, a boreal forest. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. But there's a desert too. That makes me nervous. All right, we're gonna set course for adventure, folks. I know we're about six minutes in. I haven't really done anything yet, but I, I, I'm gonna learn as we go. So this is gonna be a kind of a fun experience for me. I'm getting to see it for the first time. That was weird. It like flashed my desktop for a second there on me. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be looking forward to figuring out how to exactly play this because I have no idea what I'm getting into. All I know is this was on my radar a long, long time ago and it still is to this day. So game is paused. That's good to see. Wow. That's weird. All right. Clockwork Empire's tutorial, the prudent bureaucrats guide to colonization. All right. Up, down, left, right. Of course, space is pause. Zoom to location is right click. Uh, if we right, or if we use the middle mouse button, we can rotate or use Q and E. I like that, and we zoom in and out with the mouse roll, of course. Welcome to the colonies. There's a lot to learn about managing a colony, but first, take a moment to familiarize yourself with the camera controls above. The game has been paused while you read this. You can pause, unpause it with the space bar at any time. When you're ready, click the button below to start. Further tutorials will appear on the right side of the screen as you play, but feel free to explore on your own as well. Excellent. Let's get this started. All right. I'm hitting space. There we go. I'm like, I'm hitting space bar. It's not working. Oh. So we can, like, zoom really far in, but that's as far out as we can zoom. That's okay. I'm fine with that. All right, the tutorial. Click me. In Clockwork Empires, all work is handled by overseers. Each overseer can take one task or building at a time and can be assigned lower class laborers to speed up their work. Overseers are hands to do any work that needs doing. Every colony needs wood, stone, and food. So let's put your overseers to work. Along the bottom of the screen, you should see a list of four icons. I do see all four of those icons. These are your harvest commands. Click chop trees, forge, or mine surface nodes. Then move your mouse around on the game map. Relevant harvestable objects will be highlighted. Click in a spot with something to harvest, and one of your free overseers will automatically take up the job. If you create additional harvest assignments, each will be taken by a different overseer. Or overseers with an S, apparently. If all of your overseers are busy, the jobs will wait until an overseer becomes free. Take the time to gather 15 or so resources, then we'll continue. Click me, click me. Alright, I'm going to dismiss the alert. Alright, we have chopped trees. Oh, cool. We, we chop them in like an area, it seems. Okay. I'm going to chop them right over here. Okay, we can mine surface nodes, and apparently that's, like, right up in this place. Uh, forage. We can forage some stuff. Where, how, where do we, where do we forage at? Are, are, hmm. Are these forageable? I think they might be. We'll forage those plants over there, and then finally clear the terrain. That's something we can do as well. I don't know what that stuff is right there, but I'm going to clear this out. 
Simply because I can. Okay, so if we unpause... Theoretically, our people will go and start doing stuff? Yep, looks like that's indeed the case. Is there a speed button? Usually there's a speed button in games like this. <laughs> Athena Strong Tonic. Lucinda Denman. Uriah Steel Thatch. Fidella Rivington. Alright, well, can... I'm gonna have you go chop some trees too, guys. Come on. Let's get to get some work going on here. Is there anything to forge around here at all other than the one thing that we're already forging? Oh, you're already forging and it's not gonna let me. Ah, down here, okay. Go ahead and forge those as well. Okay, you have question marks over your head. You're a, are you a laborer? You're gossiping. What are you? Does it tell us what you are? You are a laborer. We can have you help. How do we get that to, how does that happen? I don't know how to assign you yet. So, well, we'll, again, we'll play through the tutorial and we'll figure out how things need to be assigned. Using the clear terrain. Okay. I, I'm sure it'll tell us how to do, uh... Okay, here we go. Another important thing overseers can do is haul your goods to stockpiles for easier access. Let's create a stockpile to move all the resources to. Items and stockpiles are stacked together, saving space and hauling time. Look in the bottom left for the zones and constructions. That's, I was just about to say that. There's probably going to be zones and stuff coming up soon where we'll actually be able to place all of this stuff at. And I hope that the tutorial will allow us to do it soon. And sure enough, here it is. Then choose either small stockpile or large stockpile from its submenu. Click and place a stockpile on the map, press escape, or the done button when finished. If you can't find any room, you can use the flattened terrain button in the same submenu to clear some space. Overseers who aren't busy with other jobs will move goods to your stockpile automatically. If you'd like to dedicate an overseer to hauling, you can click on the stockpile and use the drop down at the top of its window to assign an overseer exclusively to haul goods. If your overseers are too busy chopping to haul stuff, you can click a few of your harvesting sites floating icons, then cancel the harvesting order to free up some people. Create a stockpile and complete Overseers 2 to continue the tutorial. Alright, so this is our stockpile, zones and constructions. We can flatten terrain or create a large stockpile. I would like to create a large stockpile. And I'd like to create it like... Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. That's interesting. So we're going to put one there. I'd like to create another one too if I could. Let's see what a small stockpile looks like. Oh, cool. So we can create a couple of small stockpiles right off the large one. There we go. Something like that. That's cool. Okay, and then Overseers 2. It's probably around tea time by now and about time for your colonists' first break of the day. If you click on the Overseers button in the top left of the screen, you can see details such as when your Overseers are on shift and how many laborers are assigned to each Overseer. Colonists on break will do activities such as eating, sleeping, or socializing. If you haven't been in this window before, you may notice a 2 under Unassigned Worker Pool. Okay. Sorry, I'm looking up here to see what, what they're talking about. Um, assigning laborers to your overseers will speed up their work significantly. To assign your worker, find an overseer you wish was working faster and click an empty bubble next to their portrait. This will allocate a worker from your pool. If you wish to remove them later, simply right-click the filled bubble. All right, I want Athena's Strong Tonic and... Are you the chopper? Chop tree. And Tobias Seamsley to actually have the Overseer. Alright. Athena Strong Tonic. Let's go ahead and give you one. And the other guy was, I'm sure his name will pop into my mind. Tobias. Chop some trees, my friend. Chop some trees. Alright, so we have those two joining the squad. Okay, Overseers 1 is complete. Overseers Tutorial is complete. Now we have Buildings and Buildings 2. Buildings are an integral part of a colony. Creating a building is split into two parts. This is going to get long, so bear with us. 
First, choose a building. In the bottom left, go to the buildings and workshops. Let's start our construction by choosing a carpentry workshop. You may then drag out rectangles in any combination of shapes. They will combine into a blueprint for the building. Huh. Keep an eye on the cost at the top of the screen. No work will be done if you don't have enough materials. When you're finished, press done and an, unveil and an available overseer will begin construction. Free up some people if everyone is busy. The UI will then switch to module placement mode. We'll discuss that in building two. Read that once your building blueprint is placed. Okay, simple enough. I think I'm going to do some of the flattening of the terrain. I think that's going to be pretty good. So, let's see here. And how does that work? Is it just going to make it all, like, normal? So, like, I want, like, all of you to be, like, the same height. See, I don't know how this is going to actually work 100%, but whatever. We'll give it a shot. See if they get after it here. Yeah, I'm looking for pause game. Oh, 2x game speed. Okay, how do we do that normally? Is there a button that does that? Because I'd like to know. Oh, cool, they are. They're fixing all the land. Nice! Go, my people, go! Do your job. Do your job now. Also, when you're done, chop down that tree. I said escape to get rid of that. Alright, that's cool. Flatten those things out as well. Probably flatten all the stuff out over here. It's kind of like just do a big area. Maybe even bigger than I already did. There we go, something like that. That should give us a little bit of wiggle room, I would assume. Alright, so they're talking about buildings now. So we're going to go to buildings, and they said workshops. So we're going to go to workshops. We want carpentry. Workshop carpentry. And then we have to build... Uh, do we know how big it's supposed to be? And does it show us the cost? It says there's cost somewhere. Like... Does it show me where the cost is? Like, I, I want to kind of go like a... Maybe a 6x6? Six six? I don't know. Oh, there it goes. Okay. 7 and 4. And do we have a thing on our... Commodities of... Okay, we have plenty of that. Alright, we'll say done. We're going to pause. Okay, empty buildings won't work on their own. They need modules. Modules have several types. In the module menu, buttons with silver borders are used to do work. While ones with swirly borders passively improve the quality of your buildings. Interesting. Normally, modules need to be built separately as a boxed module before they can be placed. But a few basic modules can be built without access to any other buildings. Since this is our first workshop, we'll be using those. Place a door and a carpentry workbench to get started. Then, or when placing, right-click rotates a module, left-click places it. When you're done, press enter or escape, and your overseers will handle the rest, assuming you have the necessary logs. All right. So we went from there to modules. We need a door. Um... Gosh, I don't know. Guess we'll put the door there. Can we not put the door there? Is that... I feel like maybe we... It has to get done... Oh, I don't... Maybe it has to get done first. I don't know. Do they have to... Oh, they, yeah, they probably have to build it first. Okay. We'll wait till they build it before we try to... <laughs> I'm like, hmm, this whole door thing isn't working. Alright, so that's there. Let's see how quickly they build. Alright, so Seth Brimble's doing some work. It's gonna take him a while. That's okay. Are you, You're still chiseling away over there, huh? We need to get some more trees chopped, I imagine. Let's go ahead and harvest... 
what, what, what's wrong with you? Clay node, huh? Let's go ahead and harvest that and maybe harvest some trees over here. I don't know. Oh, you, it was paused. Okay, so they don't just stop moving. That's totally fine. What are you doing? You're chopping trees over here or something? That's crazy. Oh, people are getting tired now. Hurry up, Seth Brimble, if that is your real name. Alright. What are they on? Somewhere it said that they were on... Oh. Building has no door. Carpentry workshop built. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know we need to add the module in. Okay, so we need to build the door. This shouldn't be... Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's gotta be like... I got you now. Okay, so we're gonna build the door there, and then what we need is... Is this? Carpentry workbench. Okay, we're gonna build one there, and probably another one over here, maybe? Can probably... What is this? Is this two? Can probably build three across, so let's just build one for now. That's what they requested. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna unpause, and see if they can go and build the door up. They're able just to walk through. Oh, they're all gonna sleep inside all at the same time. Eh, you know what? They they did a lot of work on their first day. I guess they're tired. They all want to sit in. Man, imagine if they ate beans or something horrible. I don't know. Maybe even that sausage probably isn't great. A bushel of sausages. They had left their bread on the ground. Why didn't they put that on the stuff? I don't I don't get it. Somebody gonna build these modules? Modules are under construction. Oh, it looks like they're going to eat first. And Okay, that, that makes sense. Edwina uh, Bilad, or Bidad? Bildad. She's doing work. Alright, so we have a door now. That's a good sign. And she's gathered up all the materials to go build the workbench. Or the module. And that is done. And yay! Alright. Now that you've got your workshop set up, time to make stuff. Click on the floor of your workshop to open its menu. Then assign an overseer to the building using the drop down at the top. The drop down will tell you all sorts of information about the overseer you're assigning, such as their traits and relevant skill levels. Once that's done, you can order production from each work module you have. Each worker assigned to your overseer can work at a different module, so make sure you staff or you're staffed appropriately. Different types of modules can make different types and quantities of items. As for what to start with, we humbly suggest planks, which are used to build a great many things. An assembly workbench wouldn't be a terrible idea either. Create 10 products in the workshop to continue. And a quick note. If you find yourself confused about particular concepts or buildings in the game, there are a number of resources available to help you. Just about everything in the game has an informative tooltip, including characters, commodities on the map, and indicators on the UI. If you don't know, mouse over it. You can also click the question mark button in the top right of the screen to open the Colonial Handbook, which has all sorts of information. Lastly, you may find yourself wishing things would happen a little faster sometimes. The 2x button in the top right of the screen will speed the game up, just don't miss any important notifications. Alright, so there we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're about out of time for this particular episode anyway, but... Before we do that, I would like to assign an overseer. I'm going to assign Edwina. She did a lot of the work to get here. I, I say that. Uh, let's see. What's her last name? Uh, Bill Dad. Um, she actually... Okay, so who's got the most carpentry skill right now? How does this work? So it's the one underneath. So actually, Lucinda is the one that has the most carpentry skill. So she should be the one doing this. So we're going to actually assign her there. Then we're going to go back up to the Overseer's menu. And I'm going to say that we don't need somebody helping to chop trees anymore. So you're going to lose your... Uh, can we undo you? No? Oh, we just right-click. Okay. We right-click to undo that. And we're going to hop back in here and... Building... Select... Uh, to s click to select a work... Shop... Workshop product. Sorry. Um, 
I'm looking to see if there's anything else around here where I can add a worker to it. I think I'm just going to have to add it the other way here. So Lucinda was the one, so I'm going to give you the worker. I'm going to click here and click to do planks. I wouldn't mind an assembly bench, so I'm going to do that one first. And then we'll see how this plays out. So you're a laborer. You're doing stockpile stuff right now. You're... I know where you're going. Are you a laborer as well? Lucinda's there. Why are you guys talking? You're on shift. Oh, you already did your job. Okay. Okay, and you're Levita? Levita Wood Temper. Nice. Perfect name. Alright, so now we're going to do a bunch of planks. And we're going to do, I want to say, might as well do ten. Okay. And let's see if they actually get to work and start doing stuff. Hey, the game's saving for us. Nice. Alright, and is Lucinda going to actually do anything? or? Oh, we also have the uh, workbench now, so can we place that again? Let's go into our modules, and we have the assembly workbench for assembling modules. It can also make trade food if placed in the kitchen. Now, do we want to place this inside of this place? Oh, it's a pretty big uh, deal. You know what? We're going to do it. I, I think that's fine. We're going to go ahead and we're going to place that in there and we're going to see what we can get done. So, like Araya Steel Thatch is going to take care of it. I'm going to point out he's got a beautiful mustache. Good for him. Okay. What can we do with this? We can make another assembly workbench. We can make a decor workbench and a ceramics workbench. We can also make a cot, which I don't hate. We also do practical beds and all sorts of stuff. So I think we're probably going to end up doing the cot. Mostly due to the fact that it's going to allow us to build a building and then have people sleep inside of it. Alright anyway, folks, that's going to be a tale for another time. I'm going to break off the episode right here. I will be continuing this somewhat regularly, guys and gals. Look for at least three to four episodes. I eh, will say two to three episodes a week. How about that? Two to three episodes a week. I'm leaning toward three as opposed to two, but you never know what can happen and what can slow, slow us down. Alright folks, that's the plan, the goal, the hope, the dream. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want more information about the game, you want to know where you can get the game, information on the developer, or any of that wonderful fun stuff, it will be down below in the description of the video. If you guys enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, and share it. And I will see you guys in the very next episode. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later. <laughs>